Hey everyone, so a quick update about the player appearance handler component. It's of course coming with uh, version 1.1. So there are quite a few things I updated here to make it both easier to use and more configurable. But first I want to talk about um, armor pieces and the way we displayed armor before and what you can do now. So just like before, if we go under the editor general items and look at an armor piece, for example, such as those boots, um, we can still, you know, uh, have a name here and if it's matching one of your armor pieces from the list here which have to be directly inside your character prefab then it's going to work perfectly and just display this game object on and off right so it's going to um, enable it when you equip this armor piece so this boot for example and hide it when you um, unequip them but i also wanted to give you a new option now which is mesh so in the case that you select mesh, it will let you drag and drop, well, a mesh, mesh directly, right? So um, if I go under armor and look, for example, for the cloth boots, here I can find the mesh easily and I can now drag and drop that. And this instead will um, find one of the, for example, one of the reference I'm going to show you a bit later um for the boots for this character and instead of having all those um game objects here you can just swap the mesh directly to the skin mesh under all right so i'm going to show you how this actually works and the setup you need so if we select the character prefab here like i said we still have the um armor pieces list right you can still use that you can use both mesh and names within the same project on whatever item you want it still work um it will work fine together now what we have, if I collapse this, we can look at armor renderers, right? And this lets you add different entries. Also, you see that this directly lets you choose the actual armor slot. This armor slot is um, defined by you in um, settings and items. So if we go down here, we can see um, armor slots. And here we have helmet, etc. So you can find the same list. If I would go ahead and add my own one, I could now select it here. So this is very cool because now, for example, what we could do, instead of having all those armors here, um, for example, I'm not going to do it, but we could delete all these and we can just keep those as kind of like a template reference. So for example, this one, we could just call it chest, um, boots, cape, etc. And instead, what we will do is, for example, if we wanted to set up a reference to the um, helmet, we just select the helmet slot here and we will um, go ahead and drag and drop the helmet reference we have here. And what this will do is when you equip the uh, cursed hood, for example, which is a helmet. So as you can see, you know, armor slot here is matching. So this, of course, will have too much. So if you equip an, an item of type helmet or rather with armor slot helmet, it will look in your... Um, character prefab if one of the armor renderers is set to armor slot helmet and if it is and this is also set to mesh it's going to take this mesh and apply it to this helmet here and you also have the option for material so this lets you dynamically um, swap in and out any mesh you want and apply the material also um, dynamically and that way you could just have kind of like one set of armors which is not really armors it's more like a predefined skin mesh renderer within your character and ready to uh, swap armors. Of course, um, on the technical art part, um, this is really up to you to make sure your armors and those mesh, mesh are going to work with your character and the rig and whatever. I'm not expert with that, um, but my job is complete here in terms of functionality and um, allowing you to do that. So anyway, now concerning the other improvements, um, remember we, Previously, already have an option to hide certain body parts in RPG Builder. So, for example, if you will go ahead and equip some pants, we could hide the legs. Or, for example, a chest. Let me show you um, why we would do this. So, here, if I equip this chest, it looks great, extra, but as you can see, it's clipping through uh, the body. And the polytop models are really well set up for that, so that if I now disable the um, chest slot, or rather, like the body part, um of this mesh then now my armor works perfectly right and um we don't need to render this as it's below so it's not gonna clip because if i now disable this you see that it's completely gone right um and 
it was working well, but it was predefined. It was not really like a, a modular system. Um, it was predefined what kind of armor type you could do, and it was very much made for Polytop, right? Um, what I did now is it's completely different, and it's very similar to the armor renderers uh, in the way that you add your own body renderers here. You select the type. So in this case, let's say we wanted to add a um, chest body type, or rather body uh, parts. So chest, and here I would drag and drop my body. And now when I go to, for example, let's go back to RPG Builder, select the forge armor. Now, if I equip um, an armor of type armor slot chest, it is going to look for the um, body renderer here and disable it. So this avoid people to have to manually add their own like body types and uh, body parts and things like this. So uh, here you can just add as many as you want, select your own uh, armor slot, select which part of your character should be disabled or enabled when, you know, unequipped, and it will work um, out of the box. And that's pretty much all there is to these updates, but um, I think we can all agree it's just a very nice improvement overall. And the update also comes, as you can see, with its own like custom editor class for this component now. So it's just cleaner and it's also allowing to do all those kind of like custom um, drawing of properties, etc. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you like the update. Let me know in the comment and on Discord. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.